Gabrielle Bernstein. Gabby! Gabrielle Bernstein. Gabby Bernstein is an author, motivational speaker, and spiritual guru. Calling on the guidance of the highest truth and compassion to enter into this space today. She's also a businesswoman who sells courses and memberships on her website for earthly currency. Are her teachings helpful? If we don't live in a way where we have full faith that the universe has our back, then what are we doing? Or potentially hurtful? I know how to make money, and I'm gonna keep making money. We'll explore these questions and a lot more in this video. This episode is thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. I asked everyone which guru should be featured next on this channel and they chose Gabby Bernstein. If you would like to help guide the content on this channel, much like the spirit guides we're going to be discussing today, the link is in the description below. So Gabby Bernstein has been inside of the self-help space for quite a while now. Recently, our manifesting queen and the only hippie, Rachel Hollis, promoted her book and ironically, shortly after that, Rachel's ex-husband, Dave Hollis, interviewed Gabby on his podcast. Today, we're gonna to talk about some inconsistencies in Gabby's life story, how it seems to me that she's in very dangerous territory, acting as if she's a therapist half the time, and just a bunch of other random things that I have found watching hours and hours and hours of Gabby Bernstein content. But before we go any further, trigger warning for suicide and baby loss. It's very important that if you are experiencing any distress about these topics, please do not finish watching this video. All right, so first things first, who is Gabby Bernstein and where did she come from? I personally could not find one photo of Gabby as a child, and that might be because she says she barely remembers her childhood at all. I have no memories of my childhood, like zero. Uh, Up to what age? Uh, really, I mean, even I really don't even remember much from high school. But 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 mainly like the you know be, you know infant to fifteen or whatever it was, right? One thing she says she does remember, however, is that her family apparently struggled with money. I grew up in a in a home where there was no a lot of financial insecurity. So what I heard her say there, and that sentence was sort of unclear, was that she grew up in a home with financial insecurity. Now I guess it depends on your definition of financial insecurity. It's different for everybody. But from Gabby's own stories, her dad worked in finance and she grew up in Larchmont, New York, which is one of the most wealthy areas in the entire country. So Gabby's family could be the exception that you know, they were uh, financially insecure while the rest of the neighborhood seemed to be very, very well off. But the rest of Gabby's story seems to elude that she had a pretty privileged background. And when I was 21 years old, I was like, I made a decision. I was on my own. I was you know, out of college. I'm going to support myself and I got to make some money. And I was promoting parties at nightclubs. My, my cousin owned some clubs and I started promoting parties. And one night, you know, and I was like, oh yeah, I can totally do this, right? I can totally do this. I can get my girlfriends to say Gabby at the door, like hundred percent. But I, I, you know, I was like, I can do this. I can, I can really give myself the, um, the ability to, to earn some money here. And then the first night I promoted the party, my cousin handed me a thousand dollars cash. And I was like, in that moment, I had a quantum shift. I, I said, I know how to make money and I'm gonna keep making money. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the secrets of the universe. Just make sure that your cousin owns just a few nightclubs in New York City and can give you a job where you bring all your friends to hang out at the bar. And then you too can be financially and spiritually abundant. Ugh. So simple. This seems to me to answer a lot of questions that I had about Gabby watching her through the years. She started a PR company with no experience when she was 21 years old. She lived a very high paced, fast lifestyle in New York. And it was really confusing as to how she started all this, like where the money came from. And now it makes sense. That seems to be the answer that's always buried somewhere within these self-help guru stories. They wanna make it seem like they are the ones who created this abundant future. But in reality, you know, nine times out of 10, from what I can see, it's either a spouse, a family member, or some sort of money that was given to them to take these risks. And the more and more people I cover that are in this space, this story seems to emerge over time, yet it's buried. <laughs> And speaking of spouses, Gabby is married to a man named Zach Rocklin, who used to work for JP Morgan, but since has left and now is the COO of Gabby's company. 
Once again, I'm not buying that the universe provided my abundance uh, narrative coming from Gabby this time. And uh, if that wasn't enough, Gabby also says that her education was also a very humbling experience. I knew that there was a book in me, many books in me, but I had no idea how to string a sentence together. I had my literary education ended in eighth grade. I had no idea how to create the structure of a book, how to write an outline, how to, I, none Tell of it. Tell stories. It none, none, of of it, it. none of it, none of it, none of it. Yeah. And it's very important for me to share that I had zero, zero, zero writing experience when I started. Writing about my inspirational stories into a career as a, as a published author with literally zero background and in, in, no literary background. I'm tomorrow submitting my sixth book, multiple New York Times bestsellers. And I don't say this to brag, I say this to inspire you because six books later, multiple New York Times bestsellers, one number one New York Times bestseller, and I have eighth grade English. That is the extent of my literary experience was eighth grade English. So all of this is self-taught through the desire to put a dream into form. Okay, so from watching those clips, you would probably assume, and I assumed before looking it up, that Gabby had not graduated from high school, or at the very least, she might have graduated from high school, but barely, or you know, definitely didn't go to college. If she just had eighth grade English, there was no college, but that's not true. <laughs> Gabby actually graduated from Syracuse University in 2001 with a theater BFA. I guess again, Gabby could be the exception to the rule that every other student in America, you know, needs to take English in high school and English again in college, but not Gabby. She's special. She's been selected from above, so you know, she doesn't have to take those classes. In reality, Gabby already sold her first book before she even wrote it. But I was really good at selling, so I sold my book because <laughs> I had a good idea and I had a built, a, built a bit of a platform. So I sold the book to a publisher and then I was like, uh oh, I have to write the book. So it wasn't even as important for her to write well necessarily, it was already sold. And it seems like Gabby likes to downplay her education the most when she's promoting her bestseller masterclass, which costs $1,300. Or if you can't afford that right away, you can spend 14, 28 over 12 months. And I think the reason that she downplays her education is because she's trying to appeal to the most people possible. If she gives out the perception that she has no education, she could barely write two sentences and became a best-selling author, she is obviously the most talented teacher in the world to take you who may not have experience with writing either and now you're going to become a best-selling author. That's the pitch I believe she's trying to insinuate by rewriting her narrative to fit the audience. So speaking about her writing, there's another discrepancy that I find to be interesting and weird but important to point out who is actually giving gabby the words in her books i write every single word of my books every single word of nine books not a single word is ghosted uh maybe an editor has like changed a sentence once or twice but these are my words my books ironically she says her words weren't ghosted but were they spirited you mentioned earlier about like you really channeling these books, you know, and I think that is writing for me is such a spiritual practice. And I feel like we are channeling books where we're not writing them where we're literally channeling through through us. So what kind of practices do you use to help keep that channel of yours clear so that you can receive this divine wisdom and guidance that goes into your books? I make sure I'm un uninterruptible. Number one, I think I also shared that I choose my magic hour. I say a prayer before I write. And I just mm -hmm. say, thank you, spirit, for writing through me. And this, th I do this thing that's hard to describe, but I switch to a, it's almost like I'm switching to a different part of my brain. Mm -hmm. And also, because I, I am, I am, we all are mediums, but I have, I do hear spirit. So I can say, hey, come on in, <laughs> let's go. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't buy this crap. I hate, hate, hate when people do this and say, oh, I have some sort of ability above the average human. I'm a psychic, I'm a medium, I can read your aura, I can see what you had for breakfast. I just don't believe it because there's no proof. And if it's true, why aren't you going to help the police? Why aren't you at the hospital healing people? Ugh. Ugh. That's how I feel when I hear someone say like, oh, I, I channeled the book. 
come on. And for the record, I also think that Gabby just generally thinks she's better than you. So I could be doing way more than imaginable than the average person, which I can do. I have the capacity to do more in one day or one hour than people could do in two months. I have created far more, and I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just trying to be a powerful example of what it looks like to live a spiritually aligned life, right? I have created far more in the last 15 years than I think people could do in a lifetime. You might agree with me on this. Like I can, in one hour, I can do more than the average person can do in a day mm -hmm. or two days, mm -hmm. okay? And that's because I do things from inspiration. Right, so you do things better because you do it from inspiration, but the rest of us just do it for shits and gigs. For someone so spiritual, her ego is quite large, in my opinion. Now we're gonna go back to the spirit guides because this is a big part of the Gabby Bernstein story. And before we go any further, I must reveal the name of Gabby's spirit guide. My guides revealed their names to me when I was in my early 20s, and I never questioned it. And, and I've had many mediums that have come into my life saying, oh, um, I'm, your guide Peter is here. And I knew that was his name a decade ago, far before it was confirmed to me with the psychic uh, presence there with me to, to say, yes, you're correct, what you did believe was true. Well, if a medium confirmed it, then I know I am convinced. If I told my therapist that someone named Peter was telling me to get on my computer and type a bunch of words all day, I think I would be presenting this video from inside a facility, if you know what I mean. And apparently Peter has used Gabby as his personal earthly secretary more than once. At which point I feel this energy begin to move me and lift me up and bring me to my desk. And I sit down at my desk and involuntarily I place my hands on the keyboard of my computer and my fingers just start typing and they're moving and they're moving and all of a sudden at the top of the page, the words that were not mine came onto the page. These are the steps for spiritual surrender. Okay. So I just let my fingertips continue to go. For 30 minutes, my fingers just glided across that computer screen and I just let the words come onto the page and words that were not mine, ideas that were not mine, belief systems, guidance, wisdom that was not mine came onto this page. And within that half hour of period of time, I channeled the five steps for spiritual surrender. Yeah, that sounds real. Why do I keep picturing this? Another big part of Gabby's story is in 2005 when God or spirit or some voice spoke to her after she was going through a crisis. By the time I was 25, I picked up a very, very bad cocaine addiction. And I was physically drained, emotionally deteriorating, and spiritually dead. And then on October 2nd, 2005, I went to sleep, and that night, right before I went to bed, I said to myself, God, universe, whoever is out there, I need a miracle. And I woke up that morning, and I heard an inner voice, a very authoritative, loud inner calling that said to me, get your life together, girl, and you will live beyond your wildest dreams. Wait, did God say that? Or did a stranger at a recovery center say that? I only ask because in a Facebook post from 2020, Gabby wrote, 15 years ago today, a stranger at a recovery meeting gave me a promise. She promised me that if I stayed clean and sober, I would live a life beyond my wildest dreams. One day at a time, that promise has come true. Regardless of who told her what, we're gonna applaud that she got sober because that is a really good thing, a big deal, and I don't want to make fun of that too much. I'm very happy for that, and I think that's a great message uh, to put out into the world. And since we're on the positivity train, here are two more things that I don't hate about Gabby and I think are good that she's doing. Number one, she believes in vaccines. In an interview with Yahoo Life, she said, one trend that I do think is horrific is there are some voices in the spiritual space that are really against the pandemic and putting out messages about anti-vaccination and anti-mask. And that is something I'd be happy to publicly say I do not think is right. And the second thing that I'm happy about is that she does support the use of psychiatric medication. Now that wasn't always the case. I guess she sort of wasn't a big proponent of that, but then has since changed her mind. 
And this clip kind of explains why. I think it's when I they're... was part of the stigma. I was out there being <clears throat> telling people that would come to me in my talks and say, You don't say, need this. I, know, I wouldn't say you don't need this. I never ever would say that. Mm. I would say, go to your, get your therapeutic support. But I would say, but meditate, meditate, meditate. And I didn't understand that when you're having a real mental health condition where you are so, so, so out there to the point of suicide, that meditation won't work. Mm. It will work once you get back into a place of stability. Mm -hmm. um, it will work in the sense that if you pray, you'll be guided. But when you're in that chaos, you there's no stillness. And so it's letting God work through the medication. Yeah, It's a tool, it's it's um, even even a perceptual shift, right? Mm -hmm. The day that I picked up, I had never, I was brought up homeopathic, so I had never fulfilled a prescription before I went to go that, wow. get, get that prescription. So what was that like? Did you feel I shame it. getting it or did you no, feel like, I, was, I needed this? No, I was so this. grateful for something that would give me relief. I oh, ran there, I yeah. ran there. Wow. And that night I went to the, I remember I went to Dwayne Reed with my husband, he went with me. I was like, how do I even get this? They're like, give us the prescription, we will give you the medication. I was like, is it covered by my medication? They're like, yes, you pay for insurance, you're good. So it was like this crazy moment. And then I hadn't even taken the pill yet because I would have to take it the next morning. And I was at dinner with my husband. All of a sudden I was like this happy, amazing person because I was just so grateful that there was something that was going to help me. Wow. Right? And I don't think anyone, when they're in dark suffering and a life-threatening situation, would in any way deny the support. This concept of changing your mind as you go is not inherently bad, and I don't not support changing your mind. I think that's a good thing. However, when you're a self-help guru or an author that's telling people how to live their life, and then five years later, you know, something actually happens to them, something bad or something different, and now they're like, Psh, all those rules, throw them in the trash. But you don't realize how many people might have taken that advice and done something in their life that is now ruined or didn't work out. And I feel like they don't take much responsibility for that. There's a nice balance between personal responsibility and guru responsibility. And I think they should be balanced. But a lot of times I think, you know, the gurus end up just going, ah, I'll put all the responsibility on the followers and they can fend for themselves. And if you really truly were an empathetic spiritual leader, would you be doing that all the time? I have my doubts. Now it's time to start covering some of the more sensitive topics. I personally believe that Gabby thinks she is basically a therapist. I think this for a few reasons. One of them being that she speaks in great detail about psychological and therapeutic techniques. I have done a deep dive of uh, lots of therapy and EMDR therapy, which I highly recommend. Never heard of that, what is oh, it? Oh, come on, really? EMDR? Yes, yes, Never. yes, you're gonna wanna do this. I mean, everyone could benefit from it. And then through EMDR, you could actually walk out of an EMDR session just new, like in a moment, be like, that's clear. Wow. That's clear. This is, what I'm referencing right now is internal family systems therapy, which I've most recently- I love. You love IFS. Okay, great. Well, I just got the, I'm, I'm now trained in IFS, so I'm here for you at any time. Gabby claims in the podcast with Dave that she's trained in IFS. I don't know exactly what that means because I was under the impression that you had to be a therapist first and then could be trained specifically in IFS as like a specialty. So I'm not sure exactly what she's talking about here. Obviously, I talk about therapy all the time and tell people, you should go to therapy. Therapy's amazing, do therapy. This is my experience with therapy. All I can really offer is my patient experience. And I think sharing patient experiences are amazing. You should say whatever you experienced and whatever you know things you didn't like and did like and you wanna share that out in the world, I'm all for it. My problem is when you start to, you know, if you've gone through a technique and then you start to explain it as if you are certified to explain how it works for everyone else. Now going back to the whole, I believe that Gabby thinks she's a therapist thing, uh, involves her podcast called Dear Gabby. During the episodes, people ask her questions and they often veer into very, very, very serious topics very quickly and she answers questions as if she has some sort of knowledge on all of these different subject matters. Well, here's the thing. You are currently living in what would be considered a <clears throat> insecure attachment wound. Now, I will say she does put a disclaimer at the top of every episode, but I find that to be more of a fail safe for her, like a safety net for herself and her business, more than actually steering people away from the content. 
I'm not a medical doctor or a psychologist and do not offer any professional or other medical advice. It is my intention to only share my personal experience in efforts to help release shame and stigma. Gabby also posts the most clickbait YouTube videos ever. Overcome anxiety in 30 seconds. This secret completely healed me. Find your purpose in five minutes. Use this formula to achieve anything you want today. This makes a mockery out of psychology. It makes a mockery out of people who are suffering from these conditions because Come on, three seconds, you're gonna cure yourself for anxiety? Like, that. we all know that that is just not true. I get it, she wants the views. I just think when you're dealing with mental health topics that are very sensitive and very important to get right, I think that your, your wanting for views needs to be lower on the priority list. Now I wanna show an example of Gabby going so far out of her lane, she's no longer on the road. So I get back on my DM and I start DMing and I see this girl and she's talking to me and she's saying, you know, listen, I um, was sober for two years. I just went out. I feel like I'm, I wanna commit suicide right now. I start DMing with her. Within the hour, I'm on the phone with her. And that day she made a commitment to go back to recovery. Mm. <laughs> What? <laughs> a lot of questions here. How is this appropriate at all? Basically, she's advertising here. If you have suicidal thoughts, just DM me and then I'll call you and then we'll work it out and then you can promise to go to some treatment and then I can talk about it on my podcast. It's like, this is not your field. You are a spiritual guru. Send someone who has these thoughts to a professional, for God's sakes. Like, there's no follow-up either. Like, how are we supposed to know, number one, if this person exists, and number two, if the person does exist, did they go to treatment? Did they finish treatment? Did they go back? Did they have, you know, what happened? We don't know because it's over DMs. Gabby herself has expressed that she's also had thoughts of suicide. Uh, as you may have known, I had postpartum depression and anxiety mm -hmm. and insomnia and I'm like about five months into recovery from that and at my darkest moment you know Mother's Day I said I wanted to kill myself wow yep yep Holy it was cow. yeah no it was it was the darkest I've had a lot of dark moments in my life this is the darkest darkest Why? moment of my when life you, when having a child was something you wrote about is like a dream of it's yours it's a biochemical or... issue that happens to far more women than yeah. than are actually properly diagnosed with it. Sure. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just anxious because I'm a new mom. No, you're having a biochemical response to birth. Got in touch with the psychiatrist. I went on antidepressants. Wow. Yep, seven self-help books, right? And like, here I am. I'm wow. Born. And I had to, it saved my life. I would have died. I would have, I would have killed myself. Really? A hundred percent. It was just that much of a chemical. I can't say that I would have killed myself because someone would have <clears throat> intervened before that happened, right. which, which is exactly what happened. My therapist intervened. She's like, your tools aren't working. I was in two therapy sessions a week. I was talking to sleep doctors. I was- yoga, meditation, Meditation, yoga, reading. you know, melatonin, like everything, it, it wasn't working. And that's when my therapist was like, you have to have medical intervention. Wow. Yeah. I honestly think it's great and totally fine to talk about your feelings and your stories when it comes to suicide, as long as you're not pretending to be a doctor to someone else, and as long as you're not giving misinformation, I don't really have a big problem with this. My only issue is, this is exactly why videos like this that I was just talking about are silly, are stupid, are a waste of time. Because you gotta think, Gabby Bernstein's been doing 10 years, 20 years worth of work, worth of meditations, worth of classes, with, with meeting with other gurus, doing kundalini yoga, doing all this stuff that's supposed to help you live this like balanced spiritual life. And she's even feeling like this. So how can you possibly think that watching one YouTube video is gonna cure all these problems? It really just puts into perspective that yeah, a lot of this stuff doesn't work. It just doesn't work. If it doesn't work for the guru themselves, how the hell is it supposed to work for us? And I wanna go back to what Lewis said just a couple minutes ago. What he said was that having a baby for Gabby was a big deal, and he's right. She's talked about that a lot. Well, as I tried to conceive for three years, and you know I've talked mm -hmm. very openly about that, by the time I really did the work on that struggle and that push and that control, I was at such ease and had faith that I knew my baby was on the way. As many of you know, if you've been reading my books or watching my talks, you know that it took me three years to conceive my son. And in that time, 
I went through a lot of discomfort. I went through a lot of shaming of myself, feeling separate, alone, not good enough. Why isn't my body working? Why can't I have this thing that I so long for? Feeling jealousy every time I'd go on social media and see other women with their babies and their bumps and the whole thing. I, as I've spoken very publicly about how it took me several years, three years to conceive. And I had to adjust my belief system to allow myself to be in a state of alignment to really manifest what became my child, what, you know, birthing this, this boy. He, he's, a big, he's a big story throughout the book. Mm. And a big part of it was about having to just really do a complete adjustment of my attitude and my belief systems and really walk my talk as a spiritual teacher and a manifester and someone who believes in a higher power. And so I made that commitment in my own life and then it was really clear that this was something I had to start to write about in a bigger way. Yeah. Okay, so I have a problem with saying that you manifested your baby. Let's watch a little bit more of that clip where she spoke on Oprah's stage. But when we ask, we will always receive. It's the law, we will receive. As it turns out, the universe had a plan far greater than I did. The plan wasn't that I was going to get pregnant in the exact moment in time that I expected. The plan was that I was going to learn how to mother myself before I could be a mother. Millions of people, at least in the United States, have problems with fertility, and lots of them are not going to end up with a baby at the end of their journey of trying to. So when I hear this story from Gabby, I cringe because it's wonderful for her. I'm glad it's worked out for her. But her sentiment that, oh, just wait, it's coming for you too, is just not true for everybody. So it just makes it seem like, once again, Gabby's special, not you. When she got pregnant, she posted this, quote, your baby is on the way. Yeah, but what if it's not? And I wonder if people think that when their baby doesn't come, that the universe is somehow punishing them for not being pure enough, for not meditating enough or whatever. She had her son Oliver in 2018, and then in 2020, her and her husband decided to try to have another baby, this time using IVF. She posted this in September, 2021. It says, may this post offer hope to all parents wanting to conceive. After months of failed attempts, I decided to stop listening to the outside voices and turn inward for guidance. In stillness, I was able to channel the wisdom that helped me advocate for myself, ask for less stimulation, focus on egg quality over quantity, and it worked. My final round of IVF led me to one embryo that we could test. All you need is one, one miracle baby. I'm thrilled to share that another baby boy will be joining our family at the end of March. To all the future parents out there, your baby is on the way. They may not come on your time or the way you planned, but they are coming. They hear your call and they're getting ready for you. God bless all the brave spirit babies joining us in the world at this time. I'm confident they have a big mission here. But sadly, two months later, she posted this. It's with a heavy heart that I share this news. Today, our second son became a spirit baby. He lived in utero for five months, but wasn't healthy enough to remain in the physical form. I know his soul came in this form to crack us open to a deep sense of love. His name is Owen, and he is our spirit guide. That is awful and confusing. I think this just further proves that we don't have all the answers. So before we end this video on that extremely dark note, I did want to add a little lighter element to this video, and it actually came up at the last minute because Savvy from Savvy Writes Books posted this video on her YouTube channel, and I suggest you watch it in full. It was really, really good, but I'm just going to summarize it pretty quickly. So Gabby wrote this article for the Huffington Post back in 2010, and apparently she's a big fangirl, at least she was back then, of MLMs. But in the article, she praises Young Living and Arbonne and says what was once considered a pyramid scheme has now turned into a recession busting profit center. Yeah, okay. So if you've reached the end of this video, thank you so much. I appreciate you sticking around and let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. It's so again, a little bit different style. I'm always trying to mix it up and try different things. So if you like this one in particular, let me know. And also special thanks to my patrons who are really out here supporting me and inspiring me to keep going on this channel. They really are helpful and having that uh, support means the world to me. So I appreciate it. And if you would like to join the Patreon, once again, the link is in the description below. We would love to have you there. And the last thing, I did not know where to fit this in, so I figured if you made it this far, you deserve to see this. Gabby tucks her iPhone into its own bed at night. 
I don't even know what else to say. I don't know what context I can even give that, but you know, it does exist. So <laughs> for what it's worth, it's been a good time. It's been a real time. It's been a fun time. Choose sadness. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.